adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Adventure. and Lauren McCall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Well, I don't think it's a lot to ask you to do, Shannon. Answer me a question, friend. How do you know what's a lot for me to do? Well, if you ask me... No one asked you. Personally, I'd like to go to Batabano. I just want to go on record in case someone asks me how I feel about going to Batabano. This morning I woke up stretched and said to myself, oh, to be in Batabano, now that the dew is on the pineapple. <laughs> you like this town, Mr. Val. My wife here and I think it's one of the most interesting in Cuba. Don't we, Alice? I loved it. And you'll get $100 for delivering the boat, Mr. Shannon? Make it a hundred and a quarter. Well, if all you want me to do is take that cabin cruiser back to its owner in Batabano, why don't you do it yourself? Alice wants to stay in Havana and shop. Maybe on the way we can stop at the Isle of Pines, Slate. I've heard that place is interesting and educational and good for inhaling. <laughs> you can stick your head under a towel with a camphor ball and get the same thrill. Maybe we should try to get someone else, Jimmy. Make it 150. I don't know, Shannon. 137.50. Here's the key. Just one more thing, Mr. Drew. How do we get back to Havana? By train. I stopped in on the way here and bought tickets. Just take the boat to Batabano, deliver it to Emilio Lopez, who'll be waiting for you when you dock. And here, give him this envelope, too. Then take the train home. Simple. The 137.50? Give it to him, Alice. Mm-hmm. 120, 30, 37, and 50 cents. Ah, uh, now it's simple. Here's half a buck, sailor. Go buy yourself some clothes. I want you to look nice in Batabano. <laughs> The education you get nowadays for his novels. <laughs> Why squander your hard earned money in a penny arcade, Marty? For nothing, you can look at me. Huh? Oh, hi, Alice. <laughs> you should see this. Las Delicias del Sultan, the Sultan's Delight. Very comical. High type baggy pants comedy. Here's a dime. Go laugh yourself sick. Hey, dream girl. Don't be like that. Ask me to meet you here at the penny arcade. A fella's got to fill in the time. That's why people come here, to spend their pennies. I should be different. You're different, Marty. That's why I want you to see me wound round and snoop. Ah, uh, live for a dream girl. Because you're different. Husband Jimmy dies. Also friend Amelia Lopez. So our path will be strewn with flowers for the dead. You know what? I'm happy about the whole thing. You raise a finger and they dance for us. Silas? <laughs> Jimmy. My innocent Jimmy. The dreary husband thinks I don't know what he's been up to. Even a guy like him wants to think he owns a secret. On rainy days, it happens to me, too. He thinks I'm sweet, ignorant, everything his wife should be. It could shame him that I know he stole for me. A cargo of silk peeled from a Batabano warehouse, loaded onto Emilio's cabin cruiser, and from there transferred to a fishing boat. Shameful. Also very tricky. But what fishing boat, dream girl, mine? Maybe the name of the boat was in the envelope Jenny gave Shannon. Maybe it was the, the punchline to a story he whispered in his ear. Didn't want his girls to blush. I remember they laughed. Run it down again, dream girl. You do what? I wear widow's weeds for Jimmy. Go to Batabano to give my condolences to Emilio's orphans. And me? I tickle Shannon with a feather for the name of a fishing boat. Such a lush life. Run home to Jimmy, girl. I got a penny that's burning a hole through a dream. <laughs> Nice cabin cruiser the man's got here, sailor. Why don't you go below and put something on the galley stove? Liable to be a chilly night. Sure. 
Hey, Slate, come here. Now, what's the trouble? The door to the galley's locked. See? Won't open. Well, then you'll have to stand real close to me in the deckhouse, sailor. You'll have to... You want something, mister? You two don't know how lucky you are. You read head bumps from a distance, buster? Just a bump. Says you don't have to go to Bada Bada tonight. You're quite a buster, buster. What else don't we have to do? Jimmy Drew told me to catch you before you left. Said, give me the envelope he gave you, and I'd take the boat to Bada Bada myself. Come on, give. Why should Drew suddenly change his mind? Come on, come on, let's not play with the question. Off the boat, kiddies, before I have to... Oh. Ah. Fella, didn't he say something about tossing somebody? I heard him. Shall we? Yeah, have an arm and a leg, sailor. You're so good to me. <laughs> Now, let's go to Batabano. Hi! <laughs> Hello! When is this, Chiquita? How do you hi? What a baby! Nino! You're just the answer to Batabano's prayers, aren't you, slate boy? You heave into port and the girl population does nip up. Bang each other over the head with fish. <laughs> well, I'm liked here, sailor. I left many fond memories in Batabano. Hello, over there! You enjoy yourself on my boat, therefore you are a slave Yeah, if you're a mini old buzz, come on and take it away from us. We've had it. And I'll get it back. Let's go. Here, I'll give you a hand. Gracias. You are a courteous messenger, boy. You deliver my boat, you hold my hand. Gracias. <laughs> Pretty and fresh as the minute I got her, Lopez. Take a look around if you want. Hey, who needs? When stands before my eyes, the delicious equipment you brought with you. Huh? He means me, Slate. See? Give me half a chance to of Bono, and I can make a name for myself, too. Can't you give it a whirl, Emilio? I, I am already dizzy in the head from your delicious... Uh, delicious one. Aye, but first the affairs of finance. For your exquisite manner of special delivery. Now, don't worry about it, Emilio. We've already been paid. Drew paid us. He did not mention to you the matter of a bonus, which I've locked in the galley and for which the key hangs around my neck? <laughs> well, I'm I'm not one to quibble about a bonus. If you were, I'd break your leg. It should happen to me from you, delicious. Uh, I get it. Oh, Emilio, I'm supposed to give you this envelope. I know. I see myself waiting for it. Uh, first, I unlock the lock. Swing wide the door. And I disgust. Blake, what happened to him? He's dead, sailor. Shot dead. Yeah, but this gun, see? Rigged up as a booby trap. When the door opened, this tricky string set up, pulled the trigger. It killed anyone who... And I tried to open it because you wanted something hot to drink. Oh, well, so I didn't get it. Now, what could have teased Emilio about this envelope? Let's find out, shall we? It's dead, Slate. Maybe it was personal. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it was. Girl's name on a slip of paper. Ella Wiley. Well, how do you like Batabano now, sailor? The dew on the pineapples just turned to tears. <laughs> Cut it out, sailor. I'm doing is trimming my cuticles. I'll cut it out. It's the first sign of a fugitive, a cuticle trimmer. Besides, it makes me nervous. And what's the girl supposed to do when she's waiting for a train? Eat apples? Now, stop hitting around, Taylor. This apple's for on the train. Just sit still and stop making yourself obvious. The whole police force about Abano probably knows by this time that we're the two from that cabin cruise. I doubt it. People who wave to me are my friends. If a cop mentioned my name to any of them, all they do is shake their heads. Well, I want to get back to Havana. What time does that train leave? A few minutes. Take it easy. Wait a minute. What's the matter? Here, take a bite of apple. Buy you a magazine, Mrs. Drew? What? Oh, oh Mr. Shannon. Am I glad to see you? I've been looking all over for you. Yeah, what are you doing here? It's in the papers already. What happened to Emilio? I came here to find you, to ask you about it. Well, the papers were vague. Who rigged that booby trap in the galley? You or your husband? I don't know what you're talking about. And who's Ella Wiley? Ella Wiley? Who is she? Oh, Mr. Shannon, believe me, I don't have the least idea. 
I drove down to Batabano as soon as I heard. Booby trap? Ella Wiley? Well, the papers said nothing about it. I don't understand. Well, maybe your husband does. He's still in Havana? Well, I left him there. I suppose he's still there. Uh-huh. Well, don't run away from Havana, Mrs. Drew. The joint would get empty without you. <laughs> Another bite of the apple now, Slate. We're almost inside the Havana Depot. Uh, you sent the wine to Drew telling him to meet us? You counted the words on it. Pared it down to ten. What do you mean, did I send it? I'm just checking things off in my mind. Phil, I... Hey, what happened? You can pick me up off the floor now, Slate. I didn't get my lab. Oh, come on, we must have hit something. Slate, what is it? Why are all the people running? Now, don't look. Just don't look. Oh, it's a man's place. A train. Yeah. A man who was once Jimmy Drew. Take me home, Slate, quick. Uh, next time we'll edge our telegrams in black. What is it about us, sailor, that always makes us eyewitnesses to people's dying? Upon him wait, then by choo choo to Havana, the train she dies because a man's been he light on railroad ties. Make him cut it out, Slate. You heard it, King. No more sad songs for the lady. I know no other way to weep for the dead who are strangers to me, Mr. Slate. I'll introduce him to you. A fisherman named Emilio Lopez and a husband called Jimmy Drew. Now that you're friends, how will you weep? I am sorry, Mr. Slate, Lady Steele. Ella Wiley. How does a girl that caused the violent death of two men... The name of Ella once who eloped with a village idiot. Tom played them off with a brass band. Schoolgirl chum, huh? Think it's the same one? I doubt it. Ella's a big wheel back home now. Here from her regularly. Runs a shelter for homeless cats. Why don't you, sailor? It's a better life than the one I give you here. When you work it out, Slade, let me know. Let me know why a short cruise to Batabano winds two murders around our neck. Murders? It makes you think Drew was murdered. Don't you? Sure you do. So do I. See how you rub off on me, Slate? That's why I don't go home. Now there's not a lot of time. You should have seen the look on his face, Alice. When I pushed him off that platform. When it was falling, you couldn't tell whether his face meant fright or ecstasy. I've seen it. I hated it. I got a shoulder that you could forget on. Listen to me, Marty. The silk is on a boat named the Ella Wiley. We've got to be in Batabano tonight to get it out of... Uh, tonight, six hours from now. Want to try the shoulder? I'm nervous, Marty. Come on, try it. I like it. It settles the nerves. Want a room, mister? 
Well, you couldn't have come to a neater, cleaner, gloomier place than this. Senorita, I... Uh... No extra charge for the gloom, mister. Every room with the gloom. Ah, nothing. Senorita, please, I'm about to tell you... Look, I... sailor, just place your left hand on your... Senor, por favor, it is important... Let me finish, buster. Thanks. Place your left hand on your heart, sailor, bow from the waist, click your heels, hand the man the register, and tell him it's three fifty a day. If he winces... Let him have it for three. What must a man do to get in a word sideways? And that brings the race back up to three fifty. Ah, twelve years I've been on the police force of Batabano. For the first time in my life, they send me to Havana, all expenses paid, and I'm greeted by silly criminals. You've got an expense account and you're complaining? Yes, I have an ulcer. He's not here yet, but I feel it coming. Also have been stolen many great silk from a Batabano warehouse, to which we point tourists with pride. Also is a favorite son, Lopez the Fisherman, murdered with shreds of stolen silk on his boat. Sir, complain. Talk to me about your complaint. I've been having these funny aches in my legs lately, Doctor. You think... Come from running away from scenes of crime. I get them running toward the same thing. Uh, right here in the cows of the leg. Well, I hate to break up smooching about our operations, Buster, but uh, who told you it was us? Oh, it was a very jolly inquisition. All the Batabano girls who it took me hours to wheel out of them your names, Senor John. <laughs> I giggled it out of them. And now you've come to giggle us into an arrest, huh, giggler? Only to observe you until you prove yourself guilty, Senorita. <laughs> as long as all the expenses are paid in Havana. Well, sorry to break it up, pal. We're going back to Batabano. I'd never have kicks on a case. Go to Batabano. I follow legally. But take care, senor. There is a side of me that does not giggle. I thought you knew everyone in Batabana, State. <laughs> well, that was last year. This year I got you. Can I help it if a girl named Ella Wiley sneaks into the city without letting me know? What are we going to do now? I'll keep asking. Oh, there's a guy over there. Yeah, it looks like he's been around for a while. For a while? For that long gray beard and that Good. glittering eye? Ask him which boat he sailed on, Slate. The Nina, the Pinta, or the Santa Maria. Buenos dias, senor. Buenos dias. You know this waterfront pretty well? Mm, it is my wife and my mother and my sweetheart. Not the cozy group. Ever heard of a girl who... At my age, I have heard everything. Well, let me finish, will you? Ever hear of another Wiley? Last week, she was hauled out as straight, senor. That's the custom in Batabano? That is the custom with boats of whom the underneath is stuck to with barnacles. Well, you know, sailor, all day we've been looking for a girl and we should have been looking for a boat. Senor, what kind of a boat is the Ella Wiley? For fishing. One such as that one over there and the rest. And where would I find the Ella Wiley? Far, down that way, almost to the end. What interest do you have of this boat, senor? Well, I want to look it over, maybe buy it. Like the other, senor? See? Huh? What other, senor? Two nights ago, a man was aboard her. For what reason, I asked myself. Now I know. Perhaps to buy it. What man are you talking about, honey? Honey? As from the bees? Well, let's not get racy. Just tell us what man you saw. I confess it, senorita. I, I did not notice. Merely a man. Well, that was probably Jimmy Drew loading silk. Entertain your boyfriend, sailor. I'm going for a walk. Why don't I just run along beside you, huh? Well, look at him, sailor. His beard's curling already. You can't leave him like that. See you later. What took you so long, Slate? It took ten minutes to cut a ship's mooring line, set her adrift on a lonesome sea. Or a cop out for a moonlight dip might find her. That is, if he's kept in condition. The yellow Wiley. You've got a head with a nose on your shoulder, sailor. And the bucket of paint hanging on your arm. You know, I can remember when you didn't need a bucket of paint to do a town slate. I can remember when you... Ah, slate. You're pooped. Poor boy. Hold it, sailor, right here. You're going to paint words on the piling? On that fishing boat over there, the Lila V. Like her? Picked her out of the crowd. A few clever strokes of this tired paintbrush, and the Lila V becomes the Yellow Wiley. Well, that's a neat trick. How are you going to do that? Lila, first L becomes an E. I becomes an L. That gives us Ella. 
And I'm a genius at making these into wobble you, Slate. <laughs> sure, and in no time at all, we'll have Ella Wiley, a girl who never left home. <laughs> Go below and wait for them. What a bird brain you are. If they got us in a hold of this fishing boat, we'd never get out of there alive. That means we're going to get off this deck alive, huh? Taylor, you can get out of this if you want to. Just walk away. I'll meet you back in Havana. A girl complains of the cold, and right away a fella tells her to take a walk. Don't you know what to do when a girl says it's a cold night? <laughs> I'll split my woolen socks with you. The right one's got no toe in it. You can use it for a turtleneck. You think I won't take you up? You're crazy. Go ahead. Take the sock off. Hey, we're getting guests late. What do we do now? Say hello to them. Oh. Hello, Mrs. Drew. Well, if it isn't the lad, we dropped off a boat. Welcome, folks, to the good ship Ella Wiley. Have a good time. Uh, what do you know, Ellis? A ship full of heisted silk and two monkeys to guard it for us. How did you two get here? The usual way, down the street, on the dock, onto the ship. Is there any other way? So you found out about the ship, too, huh? Sure. Jimmy Drew heisted a load of silk and stashed it on the Ella Wiley, then ran back to Havana. It's a pity about you, Shannon, knowing so much. Oh, stick with me, kid. I know more. That slice of whiz dinger with the things he knows. Sometimes it frightens me. I tell you, just frightens me. Try getting scared about this. Your gun doesn't make any difference. Put yourself in my place. I'm a guy who just happens to know the lady's husband scooted back to Havana in Lopez's cabin cruiser. Because he hired me to take it back to Lopez with a piece of paper that told Lopez where he hid the silk. You should have given Marty that piece of paper before you went to Batabano. Then all this wouldn't be happening to you. Wait, wait a minute, Alice. The boy's got something on his mind. Now, what do you need more killings for, Marty? You've got a hole full of silk. And I need a new dress. Stop playing with them, Marty. Get rid of them. You're a bloodthirsty girl, Alice. Must have been you who rigged that booby trap. <laughs> Picked myself a winner, huh, Shannon? Oh, I don't know. Don't start casting your tickets till the race is over, kid. Well, we're not hard to please, Marty. Enough of that silk to take care of the time we've spent keeping it for you. Jimmy wanted the silk, too. Got him a railroad track. Have a look, Marty. After all, we got here first. We could have run away with this boat. Yeah. yeah that's right, you could have. Let me go look at that silk. Cover him with your gun, Alice. I'm going down into the hole. All right. In a second. Marty! Marty, you shot Alice. You hear me, Marty? You shot her. I've got a gun. Sailor's going to open the door. Throw your gun out first and come out with your hands up. Okay, sir. Sailor, hit the deck. Slate. Slate, are you all right? Warm enough for you now, Sailor? Well, just tell me if you're all right. How am I supposed to be? I just shot a man. He tried to kill us. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? Keep telling me that. I'll take you back to Havana, Slate. Sure. Sure, let's go. I said my. It's a pretty night, isn't it? Paper said it was going to rain. It's not a cloud in the sky. Paper said it was going to rain. What do they know? What do you know? I'll tell you. My. Look at that moon, Slate. You're crazy, sailor. It's pouring down rain. 
My, my. Stay with her. Come back to me. Get hold of yourself. It's thundering, lightning. Happens to you, too, huh? My, my. <laughs> So, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. (laughs) 